it's early in the morning and uh, I have to keep my voice down so I don't wake everyone up. We're going to search for the elusive coastal roe deer. I've started off the day with a couple of epic fails already. The first one was forgetting to bring my tripod for my cameras. And the second one was not charging the battery for my video camera last night. So I picked up my video camera and just saw that red light battery sign flashing. And uh, so we're doing everything on my DSLR today. Handheld. Brace yourselves guys, it could be a bit wobbly, but we'll hopefully get some great images of some wildlife. So it's a bit later in the morning uh, than I'd really like, I slept in a bit. Uh, but we're here now, we're amongst the dunes in South Holland. And this region is the home of a lot of uh, roe deer, pheasants and hare and some other uh, bird life. And then behind that you've got the coastal flats where a lot of wading birds uh, like to feed in the morning. So hopefully we're not too late and we'll get a bit of action on both of those sides. Fingers crossed. It's uh, quite lively here. A lot of people out jogging and stuff. But I've uh, uh, once or twice I've seen roe deer. If the people don't stop and look at them, they just keep on eating. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Actually, I just see a pheasant now. I'm going to take off my short lens and put the long lens on this camera. Now the pheasants were brought to Europe I think. Originally I think they come from Asia and from Europe they also spread to North America. There's tons of pheasants here in the dunes and it's also a national park so no one can eat them except for the foxes. Uh, it's really strange the way the animals react to people here in this uh, national park dune area. Um, as long as I stayed on the path the pheasant was coming really close to me. Um, but it went up behind some bushes, so I had to go into this grassy area which was off the path, which is a bit higher so I could get a good look at the pheasant. And as soon as he saw me take like two steps off the path, he just ran for the tree line. So that was interesting to know for next time when I see uh, an animal. It didn't take long. Uh, the pheasant I was photographing earlier was a male pheasant and now I've come across uh, his harem. So let's have a look at that. His harem of ladies. And the reason I'm riding along this uh, bike path is because uh, the 
berry bushes on the side of the park of the dunes uh, the roe deer like to feed on and they just walk uh, between the bushes and graze on the leaves I'm not sure if they eat the berries or not um, but uh, yeah and they've also got a pasture behind where they can just uh, sit on the edge of the pasture and the bushes and they can just walk along and eat so it's a bit of a paradise here for them but they're notoriously edgy so we'll probably see one but uh, whether it stays still for long enough to photograph is another question. Ah, that, that was pretty amazing. There was uh, uh, a meadow and then some uh, tree line or a bush line where uh, the meadow stops and the June bushes begin and two roe deer were just hopping along or jumping along that uh, bush line uh, they were a mating pair of roe deer I think I got some wobbly footage of them but uh, the sunlight is so strong I could really found it difficult to track them on the LCD screen uh, with the long lens on uh, so I think I got some quick wobbly footage but uh, they then uh, came towards me now some guys coming along with his radio on he's got a mobile rock station going on his bike um, but uh, where was I yeah I just uh, then uh, switched to photo mode and I got some really nice shots of this breeding pair of roe deer. Uh, I just gave up on the video completely. I really uh, missed the fact that I didn't have my uh, video camera with me where I could put the, uh, uh, the electronic viewfinder up to my eye and just track them. Uh, it's really hard with a long lens and just an LCD screen. So I switched over to photo mode and uh, this breeding pair of roe deer they really didn't uh, weren't that bothered that I was quite close to them and uh, the male was just uh, chasing the female and sometimes they'd go around in circles and uh, eventually the female got tired and she just lay down in the grass and looked at me and the male just uh, stood around looking at me looking at her and then eventually uh, went to the female uh, and it was at that stage where I thought okay I've uh, been here long enough they know I'm here uh, so then I kind of made my exit and let them uh, do what uh, nature wants them to do and uh, I came away with a really beautiful experience of these two uh, wild roe deer just uh, going about their normal behavior with me 20 or 30 meters away so that was fantastic uh, behind me I've got a path leading to some uh, sand flats now and we're going to go out onto those sand flats to see if we can find some spoonbills or some egrets or some other wading birds so let's see how that goes Well I'm out on the sand flats now and uh, they're probably about half a kilometre wide and they range uh, for at least five or ten kilometres so it's a massive area for the wildlife. And I see in the bit that's closed off to people that there's uh, some white bumps in the distance and they look, the way they're moving, it looks like they're spoonbills so I'm going to check that out with the long lens and see if I can get some stable video and some stills. Well it was uh, 
interesting with the spoonbills I didn't want to get too close to them so they've just been walking away from me and they're still feeding uh, luckily I got a little bit of footage of them uh, I was able to get okay close and uh, this 400 millimeter lens was able to get some stable footage I think because I rested it on my backpack and then uh, when I finished uh, filming that piece a group of three or four spoonbill, spoonbills uh, came in from the north and landed uh, with that group uh, but they circled over me first a little bit maybe about 40 meters away and uh, I was able to get some uh, shots of them in flight which was nice I think this 400 millimeter lens uh, it was about six or seven hundredths of a second and some of the they were the birds were just gliding so they weren't really flapping too much until they were coming into land uh, and uh, the shots came out well look like they'll be pretty sharp from the back of the camera anyway and in case you're wondering what that structure is in the background that's the port of Rotterdam and I think that section of the uh, industrial port is called the Mars Fluctor. So it's an interesting combination of nature and heavy industry around here. Um, I think the distance is a bit uh, deceptive. Uh, that's probably about 16 kilometers away, but just because the Netherlands is so flat, you can see stuff on the horizon uh, from a long way away. But anyway, we got some shots of the spoonbills. Got some dude up behind me. Put them over. That's a, a Bosvochter or a, a, a park ranger, and he's uh, walking towards my spoonbills. I hope he doesn't scare them away. <laughs> anyway, we got some uh, decent shots of some pheasants and a harem of pheasants with the male being the more brightly coloured and the females being uh, more uh, camouflaged and brown. Um, I saw a ton of rabbits on the way but no foxes. And I lucked out with the uh, roe deer as well. Lucked out or I, I had some luck with the roe deer as well with a mating or breeding pair which was pretty amazing. Uh, so overall the morning has been pretty successful except for me forgetting half of my camera equipment but uh, we should be able to make something nice out of this little experience until next time guys like subscribe and click that notification bell and i'll see you next week